One kind of DLT, distributed ledger technology, is economy-based. In an economy-based DLT, we are trying to set up a system that's like a simulation of the economy where economic rationality drives consensus. People will sometimes say, well, those that use graphs or those that use proof of stake. Uh, but that's not really a good way of describing them because you can do proof of stake on a leader-based system and you, you can use graphs for all sorts of things. What we're really talking about is where the consensus algorithm itself is trying to simulate the way an economy works, but hopefully not having the chaos of a real-world economy. But none of them have a math proof that says we won't have the chaos. Could you ever mathematically prove that the U.S. stock market will never crash again? No, it'll probably crash again. Could you prove there will never be another bubble? No, there'll probably be more bubbles. Any complex system that's chaotic can have instabilities, and there's really no way to ensure they won't happen or to ensure that malicious characters will not be able to trigger them. We don't have any proofs like that for economy-based DLTs either. So do any of those sorts of chaotic behavior and instabilities happen in a market-based or an economy-based DLT? I don't know. There are lots of different attacks that you could imagine. For example, take a very simple one. We're going to, as a community, add blocks onto a chain, and the way we will do it is that everybody kind of votes on what block they want to add next. If there's two candidates, you get fined if you vote for both. And if you vote for one and most people voted for that one, you make a profit. They actually pay you. But if you vote for one and it's in the minority and most people voted for the other one, then you have to pay a fine. You have to pay money. So you're gambling on which one you think is going to be longer. This is great. Everybody has a financial incentive to try to always add on to the longest block. And if everybody's trying to do what everybody's trying to do, then we get groupthink very fast and we all converge and we have consensus and so we always do the same thing. And so Adam Smith's invisible hand is causing us to reach consensus and we are all reaching the consensus on which block goes next and if there's a fork, which of the forks to extend and which to chop off. But is it? Could we actually have instabilities? Well, imagine that a small fraction of the nodes are compromised or if we're waiting by proof of stake, that a small number of the coins are owned by bad nodes that are compromised. They're malicious and they're very fast. And so when one of these choices comes as to which of the two branches should be extended, the malicious nodes break themselves into two groups. They collude with each other and half of them go to half of the honest people in the world and say, oh, you should vote for X. I'm voting for X. Well, they don't say you should vote for X, but they say, I'm voting for X. And the other half, go very rapidly to the other half of the world and say, I'm voting for Y. Now, what do the honest nodes say? Well, half of the honest nodes see, well, you know, a few people have already voted for X and no one's voted for Y as far as I can see. I think I'm going to extend X. Whereas on the other side, they're saying, well, I've only heard of a few votes for Y and none for X. I guess I'm going to extend Y. And so the honest people are split into two equal groups. Eventually, one of them wins out and half of them lose money. Well, this could be a problem. In normal operation, a tiny fraction of the community loses money on each round. Now we're having half the people losing money on each round. If they are rational economic players, or if people program their computers to become rational, they're going to say, you know what? Instead of being an early adopter and voting early and losing my money half the time, I think I'll wait until more people have voted before I vote. Or if it's, the voting is weighted by coins, I'll wait until more coins have voted before I vote. But if all the honest people say, I'm not going first, then they will never vote. And the entire system freezes forever. Okay, that is a trivially simple system, and I just showed how you would attack it. Of course, there's a million ways you extend the system that stops that one attack. But that's one attack. The real question is, can there be really subtle attacks that interact with your really subtle, complicated economy-based system and cause it to do bad things? And in hundreds of years of the free market, we've never figured out a way of stopping bubbles and stopping crashes. It is chaotic behavior inherently. It is a mathematically complex system. And we don't really know how to build um, a market that is secure. And as for game theory, when you have more than two players, there may not even be a Nash equilibrium. And it may be piece space complete to even find a Nash equilibrium. And with bounded rationality, you may not be able to find it. All that math stuff says it's hard. 
So can we build an economy-based distributed ledger technology that has a math proof that none of the attacks could ever work, no matter how subtle, no matter how tricky? I don't know. No one's ever come up with such a math proof, and it would be very useful to do so. In the absence of such a math proof, then we're just left wondering, I wonder if there are any subtle attacks out there that might work. And that's the current state of the art of economy-based systems. They're all very new. And so we definitely would like to have some proofs of, say, asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance. Uh, but we don't yet. And so right now we're still wondering. And that is economy-based distributed ledger technologies.